Hello, welcome to another retouching video. This is part two of my coronavirus selfie. Part one was the behind the scenes video of how I actually took the picture, showing the lighting setup and what went into creating this. We're gonna crack straight on with the retouching. Now this picture's already been through Lightroom, but with that, all I've done is apply my homebrew preset that I created and I apply to all of my pictures. It literally just increased the contrast a little bit. I take the shadows up, I take the highlights down. And on this particular picture, I have added 20 clarity. That's not something I'd usually do, but I felt for this shot, it would need it. Now I've brought it into Photoshop and what we're gonna do is change the color of a few things because in my mind, I had already envisaged what I wanted the photograph to look like. So what we're gonna do here is add another layer, change the blending mode to color, and then I'm gonna pick a blue from the sky. And let's start off there. Why not? Nice and hard around the edges. That's the brush, not my nipple and we're just gonna color this in. I thought I had some blue tape. I couldn't find it when it came to actually taking the picture. I found some black, some white, and some red. Now, one thing I have learned is that it's often easier to change one color to another color than it is to change either white or black to a color. So that's why I went with red in the end. Now, the reason why I'm changing it to blue, if I just zoom out quickly, I wanted the picture to have quite a limited color palette. I wanted it to just be the blue, the flesh tones or the panel tones of the fence there, and then green on my shorts and the grass with this little bit of, of pink coming through. So I'm actually gonna change the color of my gloves, this greeny blue on the socks to a blue, and then this little cross here. Right, there we are. I speeded that up for you because it's gonna be very boring just watching me do all of it. Um, you will notice it's not perfect around the edges, but as with most things, it's that last 5% of the work that takes up 95% of the time. And I have already retouched this picture. Um, well, I've retouched this picture five times now because I did it once already that I've um, shared in, in the previous video and on my social media. And then so far today, I've retouched this picture four times because I kept forgetting to repress record on either my screen recorder or on my phone that I'm recording um, my voice with. So to say that I'm a little bit bored of retouching this photograph now, doing the same thing five times in a row. Now a lot of the time when I'm taking pictures, I, I know exactly how I want the final shot to look um, well in advance of ever taking it. And I think that's often the easiest way. It's all about the planning that goes into it. And rather than sitting there with me trying to polish a turd, I know exactly what I'm gonna be doing in Photoshop to create um, the, the picture that's inside my head. And with this, I knew I wanted the gloves, I knew I wanted the bottle of bleach, um, the toilet roll around me, kind of like I was sort of wearing grenades or something. Um, but then sometimes there's little sort of little bits that just come to you just in the moment. And putting my rings on over the top of the gloves, um, that was something that it just amused me at the time. I sort of, I took them off to put the gloves on and then I thought, oh, actually, let's put the rings back on again. Moving down to the socks, uh, and again, this was something that just came to me at the time. I was originally going to be wearing my DMs, but I kept going into my house, back out my house, into my house, and taking them on and off again. Um, and in the end, I just slipped my sandals on. Uh, these are my garden sandals. I absolutely love them. Um, I love the, the fact that I've managed to get sandals with studs on. That's brilliant. But I don't often make a habit of wearing them with socks. But it, it just, yeah. It again, it's the cliche, isn't it? Wearing socks and sandals. Um, I'm not quite that sad yet. Um, but yeah, it made me laugh. It made me smile. So I thought I'd keep them on. 
another comedy element to the picture rather than wearing the DMs. Right, so there we go. We've added the blue in now. And if I just turn that layer on and off, I just think it's much less distracting and it, it does, uh, it ties all the colors in together. So the other thing I am now going to do is create a, another layer. I'm also going to change that to color, but I'm going to reduce the opacity down to 40%. I'm going to go back to this glove over here because you'll notice you can see my hand or see the glove through the bottle. So still with the blue, but the opacity is at 40% this time and I'm just going to colour over that area. Because I think that just makes it look a bit more realistic rather than it being um, a, a solid block of blue. So it actually looks like we're looking through the glass there. Now I'm just going to go back to that layer underneath because I notice there's a few bits on this glove that I have missed. You can see I just went over the edge there so I'm just going to erase that bit back just slightly. Right, there we go. And zooming into the bottle, back to the layer that is at 40% opacity. Let's grab a pink from this sock. And I'm just gonna color in this as well. And again, the reason why I'm doing this on the 40% layer is because it's a liquid, it would just look a bit too false if I colored it in on a 100% layer. It would just look a bit, it would look like the, my socks. Uh, we don't want it to look like that. We just want it to kind of look as natural as possible, really. Let's colour that in. Oh, gone over the edge a bit there. We'll erase that. There. And just go back to the paintbrush. I'm just going to feather it slightly. And I'm just going to go along the edge there with it. Cool. that looks good there. I'm going to flatten those layers down and now I'm just going to get rid of this shadow that's on the grass. I'm using the patch tool so I'm just going to draw around that. That's a shadow that was created by my light stand and my flash. Just going to drag that along there. So that's got rid of that quite nicely. And the next thing I'm going to do is a technique called frequency separation. Now this is something I use to um, retouch faces and skin blemishes and sort of bags under eyes and things like that. Now it's a technique that there's there's lots of videos out there already and they could probably explain, explain it far better than I could. So if you just Google for frequency separation um, and read up on that if it's not something you've heard of. But I've got an action here and basically what it does, it splits the photograph into two, two layers. A low frequency layer which is the colours of the image and then a high frequency layer which is all the texture and detail of the photograph. So for this particular thing, um, for this particular shot, I'm just going to use the, the high frequency layer. I'm going to get rid of that spot that's on my face there. And then I'm actually going to take the opacity down a little bit. And I'm just going to lighten up these lines under my eyes and sort of the unevenness that's on my skin. Now there's loads of different things you can do with frequency separation. Loads of different ways to use it. Uh, I'm not an expert in it by any means. Um, I kind of I know what what I want to do with it, and it, it seems to work for me. I'm now just getting rid of this specular highlight on my forehead. Now, if I was using this for a headshot which would have much more detail on it because it'd be the face would be a larger part of the image. Um, I would probably use a different technique and I would do it much neater. But as this is just giving you an idea of what I'm doing to the photograph and also because my face in this picture is such a tiny part, um, I am being quite quick about doing it. But I quite like what I've done there. So I'm just going to flatten that image and I'm just going to um, create a snapshot to show you before and after of what I've done there. So that's before 
and that's the after. Quite a dramatic difference. The next thing I'm going to do is open up the curves adjustment layer and I think sometimes with the screen recording software I'm using you can't actually see this curves box here um, but I'm just lifting the midpoint up quite a way and then I'm going to fill that um, adjustment layer get my eraser take the opacity down to 5% and with a feathered brush I'm just going to erase down the middle of my nose so this just lightens my nose a little bit and again I'll turn that layer on and off and show you what happens especially when I zoom out so that's before and that's after it just puts that highlight down my nose because that's where the Sun will be coming from anyway and I think that's quite a nice technique just to um, refine where the lights coming from on a picture really so we're gonna flatten that down and the last thing I'm gonna do is open up my curves adjustment layer again and I'm just gonna put a tiny little S curve in so by that I mean I'm taking the the midpoint and lifting it up just slightly and then I'm taking about halfway between the midpoint and the shadows point at the bottom and I'm dragging that down slightly and I'm just going to turn that on and off. See, it just puts a little bit more contrast in there and brightens that image up a little bit. And I think we're done. So I'm going to take another snapshot and show you a before and after. So before retouching, after retouching. So again, I've not done sort of too, I don't think I've really done too much to the image, but um, because a lot of it was was actually done in camera, which I think is the best way to do things. If you can get your lighting right, and if you can pre-visualize the effect you want to achieve, and then get it right in camera, and just use Photoshop to um, help help you along your journey. Right, I hope that was interesting. I hope I didn't waffle too much, as it was the fifth time of me talking about this particular shot. Um, take care, guys. Don't forget to wash your hands.